Good morning, students. We have previously learned about conventional ophthalmic drug delivery systems, under which we learned about the use of various formulations such as solutions, suspensions, emulsions for topical ophthalmic use. Ah, the eye as a portal for drug delivery can be used not only for such local therapies but also for systemic therapies and newer drug delivery systems are being explored to develop extended duration of drug as well as controlled drug controlled release strategy here ophthalmic insert is a newer sensitive and more successful ocular delivery system and it utilizes the principle of controlled release and thereby offers an attractive alternative approach to the difficult problem of prolonging precorneal drug release time. Op ophthalmic inserts have also been successful in significantly reducing the frequency of dosing and in remarkably improving the therapeutic efficacy of the ophthalmic drug. For this purpose, the topical delivery of the drug into the cul-de-sac is the most common route of delivery. And absorption when administered in the cul-de-sac may be corneal or non-corneal. The non-corneal route of absorption will involve the penetration of the drug from the formulation across the sclera and conjunctiva into the intraocular tissues. This mechanism of absorption may or may not be productive since the drug that penetrates the surface of the eye may be picked up by the local capillary beds and be removed into general circulation. And this absorption precludes the entry into the aqueous humor. But in cases where we require the drug to reach the general circulation, this can be of great advantage. And this route of administration may be significant for those molecules which have poor corneal permeability. The anatomy and the physiology of the eye has already been studied in the previous chapters and hence I will not deal with that topic again. What we will do in this chapter is we will move on directly to the ocular inserts. Before we move on to ocular inserts as a dosage form, let us first look at what are the factors that affect intraocular bioavailability. When insert, now we know that when the uh, formulation is inserted into the cul-de-sac. The lacrimal fluid in the cul-de-sac dilutes the drug solution instilled into the precorneal area and thereby a significant loss of apl the applied drug has been noted. Secondly, the kinetics of the drug whether it is uh, whether it is metabolized, whether it is absorbed faster from the, the cul-de-sac needs to be understood and needs to be used for designing the dosage form. The efficient nasolacrimal drainage whereby the instilled drug is drained away from the precorneal area also plays a major role in determining whether the formulation will and enable the therapeutically effective levels to be achieved. Proteins are present in the lacrimal fluid which can interact with and can degrade or metabolize the drugs that are introduced in the cul-de-sac. The permeability of the cornea to the drug species, whether the drug is permeable through the cornea or it is impermeable and remains on the surface of the cornea and exerts a local effect, will determine the intraocular bioavailability of the formulation, of the drug from the formulation. Also, the rate at which the drug is eliminated from the eye by all the mechanisms is very important. 
absorption of drug into the ocular tissues such as the cornea and the conjunctiva will also uh, uh, influence its intraocular bioavailability. Certain lipophilic compounds are highly permeable through the cornea and therefore the extent of lipophilicity of the drug will determine whether the drug is available for the intraocular purposes. If the formulation is a liquid, a solution or a suspension, then the amount of dose in terms of volume to be administered will determine the extent to which the tears are able to wash off the instilled eye drop. Hence, smaller the droplet that is meant to be instilled, better are the chances of being retained, better are the chances of penetration of the cornea and higher would be the intraocular bioavailability. Similarly, the viscosity of the formulation will determine the contact time of the drug with the absorbing cornea and thus determine the bioavailability. So, thus we have looked at various factors that affect the intraocular bioavailability and now we will for move forward with the remainder of the chapter. Let us begin with the definition of the ocular insert or the ophthalmic insert. These are defined as sterile preparations with a solid or a semi-solid consistency and whose application, whose size and shape are specially designed for ophthalmic application. So, the important words in this definition are sterile, solid or semi-solid consistency. Now, why this consistency is desirable? It is because these preparations are designed to release the drug over a prolonged period of time. For which purpose the formulation should remain in contact with the ocular tissue. Hence, solid or semi-solid consistency is most ideal. And its shape and size is designed for ophthalmic application. So, the size has to be small enough. And the shape should be such that it is adaptable to the shape of the cornea. These are generally composed of a polymeric base or a polymeric support with or without drugs depending on the nature of the ophthalmic insert. And the drug is incorporated as a dispersion if it is insoluble or as a solution in the polymeric support. And such inserts can be used for both topical as well as systemic therapy. As you can see, the important objective of these inserts is to increase the contact time between the preparation and the conjunctival tissue to ensure a sustained release that is necessary for the topical or the systemic treatment. Okay, so once again, the definition going back to the definition, ophthalmic inserts are defined as sterile preparations with a solid or semi solid consistency and whose shape, size, and shape are specially designed for ophthalmic application. So, I hope the definition and the concept of ocular insert is now clear to you. Moving forward, we are now going to look at the advantages of such ocular insert as well as the desired formulation characteristics. These ophthalmic inserts are nothing but solid devices intended to be placed in the cul-de-sac or the conjunctival sac and deliver the drug at a comparatively slow rate, right? So, what are the advantages of such dosage forms? Increased residence time because it is a solid. Accuracy in dosing because one unit contains only one dose. Constant rate of drug release. This is because of the use of polymers which are able to control the rate of release. Reduction in the systemic absorption because that is not desirable. What we want is the drug to act on the intraocular tissues. So, slow release of the drug and intraocular absorption 
precedes the systemic absorption. Because it is long acting, there is reduced frequency of dosing. Also, this leads to low incidence of visual and systemic side effects. The drugs can be targeted to the appropriate internal ocular tissue. Also, because the systems are solid in nature, water is absent and thereby the stability of the drug is improved. So, overall, there are numerous benefits to the use of ocular inserts for intraocular drug delivery. So, before formulating them as any drug into intraocular delivery device, let us look at what are the desired formulation characteristics which we as formulators have to build into the formulation. The first and foremost is that it should be comfortable to use. It should not be irritating or cause a stinging sensation. The delivery device which is a solid and a film should not explode by what when I say explode I mean release all the drug at once. It should be easy to handle and easy to insert. The delivery device should not interfere with vision or should not decrease the permeability of oxygen to the corneal tissue. Release kinetics should be, repro uh, should be reproducible from batch to batch. The formulation has to be sterile, stable and easy to manufacture. So, these are the desired formulation characteristics which we have to keep in mind before we proceed with the formulation development for ocular inserts. So, ophthalmic inserts or ocular inserts are formulations designed to be instilled into the eye, be retained there for prolonged period of time and release the drug slowly. They can be classified into three different types. The insoluble ophthalmic inserts, the soluble ophthalmic inserts and the bioerodible ophthalmic inserts. The ophthalmic inserts of the insoluble type can be further distinguished into those which are diffusional in nature those which employ osmosis as the principle for the principle of drug release and those which are formulated similar to contact lenses. So, in all we are going to study five different types of ophthalmic inserts. The diffusional type, the ophthalmic, the osmotic type, the contact lens, the soluble ophthalmic insert as well as the bioerodible ophthalmic insert. So, these are the three different systems of ophthalmic inserts, the diffuse insoluble inserts that is diffusional systems, osmotic systems and hydrophilic contact lenses. The first two classes that is the diffusional system as well as the osmotic system include a reservoir in, that is in contact with the inner surface of the rate controlling membrane and supplies the drug. And this reservoir consists of a liquid or a gel, colloid or semi-solid or solid matrix or a carrier containing drug homogeneously or heterogeneously dispersed or dissolved therein. So, the drug has to be dispersed or dissolved in the matrix system or the carriers and the carriers will be made up of a hydrophobic material or an organic, inorganic or naturally occurring or a synthetic material. This is because it is an insoluble insert. So, in general, the diffusional systems consist of a central reservoir of drug that is enclosed in a semi permeable or microporous membrane, which will allow the drug to diffuse through the reservoir at a predetermined and controlled rate. Now, how will this drug, why will this drug penetrate out of this system? The drug will penetrate due to the wetting by the lacrimal fluid. Thus, the re drug release from such a system is controlled by the lac lacrimal fluid that permeates through the membrane till such a time that insufficient internal pressure is built up and drives the drug out of the reservoir. So, I repeat. There is a reservoir system which consists of a drug that is dispersed in an insoluble 
polymer and it is coated with a semi permeable membrane the lacrimal fluid penetrates through the semi permeable membrane into the core of this system and it dissolves the drug and the drug solution then diffuses out the rate of diffusion of the drug solution out of this system is controlled by diffusion through the semi permeable membrane and this can be controlled and varied and set as per the desired limits amongst the different types of diffusional systems ocusert is a commercially available diffusional system of an uh, ocular insert and this ocusert is a flat flexible elliptical device that is designed to be placed in the inferior cul-de-sac between the sclera and the eyelid and it releases pilocarpine continuously at a steady rate for 7 days on the right hand side top you can see a figure wherein a human eye is shown and within this eye you can see a white ring this is nothing but ocusert okay so let us see what this ocusert is composed of go to the left hand side and you will see that there are three different layers present in the ocusert system the outermost layer is the ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer layer the central layer is nothing but the drug layer wherein the drug pilocarpine is gelled into the alginate polymer and lastly you will see a ring like structure which consists of the rate controlling polymeric membrane which is transparent and an opaque titanium ring okay the purpose for having this tit uh, sorry not titanium it is titanium dioxide ring is that it gives uh, it it enables easy handling of the ocusert right if this ring were not there you would not be able to see the ocusert and what we see on the right would not have been possible right so presence of the ocusert or handling of ocusert is facilitated by the presence of a titanium dioxide hollow ring in the innermost layer of the ocusert so the innermost layer consists of the rate uh, controlling membrane with a trans with a opaque uh, hollow ring of titanium dioxide central layer consisting of the drug in the polymeric matrix in case of uh, ocusert the drug is pilocarpine and the polymer is alginate and the outermost uh, outermost layer which is a transparent rate controlling membrane so the overall system is transparent with a hollow ring of titanium dioxide for ease of handling as well as ease of administration the second type of delivery system is the osmotic delivery system which in which there are two types of systems in the first type the drug with or without an additional osmotic solute is dispersed in the matrix and in the second type the drug and the osmotic agent are placed in separate compartments with a separation by a elastic impermeable membrane so you may have a simple osmotic delivery drug delivery device wherein both the drug and the osmotic agent are mixed intimately in the polymeric matrix in the second case the drug is in one compartment and the osmotic agent is in another compartment and these compartments are separated by a elastic impermeable membrane mm -hmm. this system is activated by the lacrimal fluid that diffuses into the deposits through the semi permeable external semi permeable membranes it wets generates hydrostatic pressure and pushes against the drug layer and the drug layer is exits out from the uh, of of the uh, laser drilled aperture so the principle of osmotic uh, drug delivery system is also applicable here in case of osmotic inserts only the devices are very small transparent and they are instilled into the eye where osmosis is the driving force for de delivering the drug from the inside of the insert to the external environment that is the cul-de-sac and 
same since the principle is the same same as that for osmotic drug delivery systems zero order drug release profile is achieved the third type of insoluble ocular inserts involves the use of contact lenses we have already learned about contact lenses in brief here it is necessary to know that these contact lenses are medicated so contact lenses made up of co covalently cross linked hydrophilic or hydrophobic polymer will form a three dimensional network or a matrix that can retain water aqueous solution as well as drug okay so a pre formulated hydrophilic contact lens is soaked in a drug solution the drug of interest and it absorbs the drug when instilled into the eye it will deliver the drug however the delivery is not precise it is not controlled it is seen that the drug delivery from such system is generally very rapid at the beginning that is immediately after installation and then declines exponentially with time to some extent the rate of re release that is high rate of initial release can be decreased by incorporating the drug into the polymer during the contact lens manufacture stage or maybe by addition of a hydrophobic component so depending on the requirements of the drug delivery as well as the nature of the drug and the contact lens variations can be introduced by making alterations in the formulation the major drawback of such insoluble drug delivery systems is that once the drug is exhausted the delivery system has to be removed from the eye therefore to overcome this disadvantage soluble ophthalmic drug delivery systems have been developed they do not need to be removed from the site of application and therefore the intervention by the physician is only at the stage of insertion these systems are designed by the use of natural polymers or by using synthetic or semi synthetic polymer here the therapeutic agents are absorbed by soaking the ocular insert in a solution that contains the drug and then drying the film and rehydrating it before using it in the eye <laughs> the amount of drug that can be taken up <clears throat> by this uh, system will depend upon the amount of uh, the polymer the concentration of, and the concentration of the drug solution into which the film is soaked as well as the duration for which soaking takes place release of the drug from these soluble ophthalmic systems is again due to penetration of clear fluid into the insert that dissolves the drug and induces its release by diffusion method also formation of a gel uh, around the core of the insert takes place and this gelification will induce diffusion of the drug in a controlled manner thus soluble ophthalmic system has two major advantages one is that it need not be removed from the eye after the drug is instilled after the delivery system is instilled it it will slowly dissolve and the second is it is able to control the release rate of the drug from the interior matrix because of the gelling that occurs uh, as the polymer swells and diffusion controlled drug delivery the rate of release of drug from such a soluble ophthalmic system is defined by fick's first law which says that j the rate of release is equal to a that is the surface area of the rate controlling membrane into d that is the diffusion coefficient of the drug across the membrane into k the diffusion coefficient of the drug into c s that is the solubility of the drug in water upon l which is the membrane thickness so the factors that define and give us an idea of the rate of release of the drug from the system depend upon the surface area of the membrane the diffusion coefficient of the drug 
the diffusion coefficient of the membrane d the the drug solubility in water as well as the thickness of the membrane as you can see larger the thickness of the membrane smaller the lesser will be the rate of release similarly the other factors which affect the drug release from these systems include the rate at which the solvent will penetrate into the matrix the extent to which the matrix will swell the dissolution rate of the drug as well as the polymer because this is a soluble system and the extent to which the polymeric chain will relax upon wetting. Next, so these were three examples of the insoluble ophthalmic inserts plus soluble ophthalmic insert. Finally, we come to the bioerodible ophthalmic inserts which is which are those inserts which are consist of a homogeneous uh, dispersion of the drug in a matrix that has a hydrophobic hydrophobic coating which is substantially impermeable to the drug these are mainly made up of bioerodible polymers including polyorthoesters and polyorthocarbonates the drug from such a system is released when the device comes in contact with the tear fluid and induces bioerosion of the superficial surfaces of the matrix. So, gradual bioerosion of the surface from the outermost surface to the inner layers takes place, and as the insert erodes, the drug is released. Okay. So, these were the different types of Ophthalm, uh, ocular inserts which we have studied in literature one important component that we have seen in all these types of inserts is the presence of a polymer which is used for forming the matrix and is in intimate contact with the drug or the polymer which forms the rate controlling membrane around the matrix to give you a brief idea about the polymers that can be safely used the polymers are either the non biodegradable type or the biodegradable type. Those which are non-biodegradable and are used in the uh, insoluble ophthalmic inserts consist of a pelleted drug core that is surrounded by the polymeric membrane made up of silicon or ethyl vinyl acetate or polyvinyl acetate. The advantage of using non-biodegradable polymers is that these can be used to design delivery systems that can deliver continuous amounts of the drug for months to years. Okay, So, the system, the system once inserted into the eye need not be removed for a period of months to years. The disadvantage is that once inserted while removal, this has to be done by a surgical process. Also, the polymers are highly branched and therefore they are not suitable for drugs which have a large molecular weight as these are unable to penetrate out of these membranes and reach the ocular tissues. Use of such polymers has been linked to complications such as vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment. So, due precaution should be used in the selection of non-biodegradable polymers for ocular inserts. The safer type of polymers are the biodegradable polymers which are used for forming the matrix and are in intimate contact with the drug. These generally, these systems generally follow first order kinetics. Examples of the biodegradable polymers in use are polylactic acid and polylactic glycolic acid. The advantage of these polymers is that they can they dissolve slowly over a period of time. They give you a degree of flexibility in dosing and treatment for short to long durations of time and they are effective in sustaining the delivery of drugs. So, this is a brief outline of the polymers that can be used for the uh, design of ocular inserts. They are of the non-biodegradable type or the biodegradable type and depending on the system to be developed, appropriate polymers should be used, evaluated, studied before they are commercialized. Lastly, we come to the topic of evaluation of such ocular films, whether they are films or inserts. And this is a list of the tests 
that can be used for the evaluation of these delivery systems. Most of these delivery systems are designed as films of the desired size and thickness and therefore an important criteria for test evaluation of these films is to test its thickness and this can be done by using a dial caliper. Next comes the amount of drug that each unit holds. Each unit is supposed to have one dose of the drug. Therefore, uniform, checking the uniformity of content of the drug in the film is very important. Here, the inserts are cut at different places on the film and each such strip, each cut strip is then evaluated by extracting the drug using suitable buffer such as phosphate buffer and analyzed spectrophotometrically or by any other technique to understand and to evaluate whether the content uniformity is maintained in the throughout the film. Pre-cut films uh, are then weighed to understand whether the, the films comply with the weight variation test. So three different pa patches may be cut from the same film and weighed and the uh, individual weights are determined and the average weight is calculated. The standard deviation then helps to understand whether the weight is uniform. Percent moisture absorption test is carried out to check the physical stability or the integrity of the ocular inserts. So these ocular inserts are placed in <coughs> desiccators at high humidity conditions and then the change in weight or the increase in weight is noted. Similarly, the ocular films are placed at uh, conditions of lower humidity and the extent of loss of weight is calculated. Finally, it is important to know whether the uh, drug that is the drug is released from these systems. So, in vitro and in vivo drug release studies are carried out to understand whether the film or the ocular insert is able to release the drug. In vitro evaluation can be done using the dissolution apparatus or a specially modified apparatus which consists of a donor and a receptor chamber and in vivo drug release may be carried out in animals that is male albino rats wherein the ocular inserts are inserted into the eye and the amount of drug that is released is measured by checking the plasma levels. Finally, when a new formulation is being developed, stability studies, especially accelerated stability studies and drug excipient compatibility studies also need to be carried out. These tests do not form a part of the routine studies, however, are necessary at the beginning during the formulation development. So, with this, we have completed the topic of ocular inserts, which is nothing but the effective drug concentration at the site of action but using the eye as an intended site of delivery. So, systemic therapy, so intra, sorry, intraocular uh, therapy by using ocular inserts is a very commonly used technique and one of the commercial products which we have studied is that of Ocusert which delivers pilocarpine to the internal regions of the eye. For further topics, uh, or you can refer Two, for more information on this tap, uh, topic, you can refer to the textbook of controlled and novel drug delivery by N.K. Jain as well as suitable review papers which I will also be forwarding to you. Thank you.